in ways which are acceptable to her and are, 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 and are beneficial to the society as a whole. And that is within the state of marriage. The husband can appreciate it, and if, he, if it makes him feel he wants to touch, he can touch and it is acceptable. There is no arguments about it. Because what they have shown, I read in the newspapers, what, about a week ago, they made a survey in the American army. Since they have brought women into the army, women now who are doing all the things that the men are doing, you know, and they made a survey amongst them. And they found that these women, in spite of the fact that, you know, they are dressed in their garb and all these different things, they are being harassed by the males. Constantly. No end of cases of harassment, even rape. So this is showing us something. There, one woman did a, a, a study of women who are in the legal profession in England, you know, where lawyers involved in law and so on, so on, so on. And the same thing, they are harassed. The pressure, you know, comes in a variety of different ways. It may be in things that are said, things that are done, that are touched or brushed against, or all these kinds of things. So Islam says no, the woman should be covered, should be protected from the society so she is not harmed and this is why the Islamic law is so severe for a person who commits rape one who commits rape according to Islamic law is executed is executed because this is considered something which is you know gross, totally against the society, it is destructive, one of the most destructive acts that you can do, this is why the penalty is so severe. But that penalty is severe because of the fact that the women is all, are also covered. So there is no justification. But now when you allow the women to walk around virtually naked in the society, then the end result is that rape is on the rampage. I mean, when you consider the number of cases of rape, for example, in America and in other countries, it is, it is on the rampage. It is totally out of hand. And the society, their attitude towards life, you know, life is so sacred to them. Sacred in the wrong sense that a person who will commit even murder People want to say, well, no, taking another life is not going to bring back that first life which was taken. We should let this person live. So this is their attitude. And as such, they end up protecting those who commit rape. And this is why you can have, for example, you know, Raul Mangala Mangalapos, you know, saying when he's talking about the women, you know, Filipino women who are being raped in Kuwait and, 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 and Iraq, you know, telling the women that they should relax and enjoy it. You know, and women being very upset by it. You, know, you can take that kind of attitude because women have become a commodity in this society. So the covering of the women is to protect their dignity and their honor and to protect the society from the results of exposure of women, which is raising of the, the sexual desires in the society to such a point where crimes against women proliferate. Very simple question. In Islam, can a man have a girlfriend? If not, why not? Well, what is understood by the term girlfriend, you know, in the Western sense, is not allowed in Islam. A girlfriend is, in fact, a mistress. This is not allowed in Islam. Because the only valid relationship of that type between a man and woman is that of marriage. <coughs> if a person is uh, a friend in the sense that you are helping out a family and the people of that family are considered to be your friends in that sense, yes, it's possible. But when it becomes intimate which is what is understood by the term of girlfriend and boyfriend, where things which are discussed have to do with, you know, uh, 
marriage in fact this type of relationship is not allowed this is why we don't even have in Islam engagement you know you may find Muslims practicing engagements you know they have engagement they have an engagement party and they're engaged for a year or two years and then they eventually get married this doesn't exist in Islam really Muslims may be doing it but it's wrong this is from Christian practices and other societies it's not from Islam Islam is you make intention for marriage and then the steps are taken and marriage takes place if you're not ready to get married now then you are not uh, allowed with that woman see because what happens is that the engagement becomes a door which is open for you now to have a boyfriend girlfriend relationship this is what it becomes and this is not allowed in Islam That's the last question at the same time I think that Islam is uh, unfair religion because the man can have more than one wife while the woman cannot <laughs> and it's a question well this is a question which is um, often raised you know this issue of man being able to have more than one wife whereas women are not however you see that person has to look into his own religion if he is from a Christian background then he has to come to grips with the fact that Christianity early Christianity never prohibited the having of more than one wife so he will have to say that Christianity is also an unfair religion and when you go back into the roots of the, the practices of the prophets they had more than one wife Abraham all the way down to uh, the, uh, you know um, Solomon David and all of these had more than one wife Jacob was known to have four wives and it was the practice of Jews to have more than one wife Christians practiced this all the way up until like the 17th 18th century many Christians had more than one wife so Islam did not prohibit you know come to to introduce something which did not already exist what Islam did was it set an organization on what was a part of human history and practice since man has existed on this earth because when we go to all of the different societies no matter where you find them on the earth we find that man practices having more than one wife even in the societies which claim that they are monogamous if you look in these same societies this man will have more than one wife what he has is he has girlfriends he doesn't call them wives he just calls them girlfriends so he he's in fact having more than one wife but he doesn't call them a wife and by not doing that he escapes the responsibility of having more than one wife so what Islam says is that it recognizes the polygamous or polygynous nature of man to have more than one woman but it says if you're going to have more than one woman then you must also now take responsibility for that the children are your children you know provision for the children provision for the home etc etc that has to take place so Islam has organized it, it didn't come to try to destroy human nature it didn't look at sex for example as being something fundamentally evil which is really what comes when you read the re writings of the of many of the, the Christians who lean towards you know monasticism etc they looked at this as being evil they even identified the tree many of them identified the tree in paradise which was forbidden for the for Adam and Eve to eat as being sex so you see this is a distorted view 